In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in today's gospel, is presenting us the parable of the sower. Many times he spoke to us in parables. And when the disciples asked him why he is talking in parables, he explained that the reason is for those that aren't ready for the message for, for the heavenly message not to understand it but only those that are pure in heart so in our days it's easier to understand things with stories and parables because we are getting it much easier right in those days it was vice versa when he is telling them about the sower and the seed and the birds and thorns and stones and so on and so forth literally you you think about the situation you imagine a field and a man that is sowing his seeds but his explanation is different so the sower is the Lord God the creator of all and the seed is the word of God which means the word of God is the Logos the Lord himself Jesus Christ himself so God the Father is planting Jesus in our hearts but unfortunately some of us the ground of our heart is other on the way or on the stone or among the thorns so we have three different categories of people that we are dealing with on daily basis. So those on the way, as you see the, the road, try now to plant something on the asphalt, right? On highway, which they use some places asphalt, some places cement, right? So try to to plant something on the road. There is no way it's going to grow, right? Because it, again, it depends on the road. If it's a soft road, a country road, it may, at some point, it may start working, growing. But if it's a highway, which literally the cars are unstopped, there is no way that something is going to grow, right? So it depends on which way we are taking in our life, which route we are taking, what kind of roads we are using for our life, where we are founding ourselves spiritually. And that's, that's the importance of the, how we are receiving the word of God, in which place we are spiritually. Where are we founding ourselves? If our heart, it's like that highway, which the demons are going up and down, spreading their evil thoughts as the cars on the highway which sometimes 
takes hours to get from point A to point B, right? So the same thing then is in your life. You never will get to your destination because you're so into this uh, earthly life, this temporal life. So, and you have no room to think about the connection with the divinity, about the connection with the Lord. You have no room because your mind is connecting, connected to that busy road and you're there. And it's taking the whole focus, the whole attention, and you cannot really see other things. Imagine on 95, on a busy day, you're so focused on the, on the road that you cannot re really see what's going on on the other side or whatever, because you, you don't want to crush your car, right? So you see it's taking completely the focus on other things and you're just back and forth there. So you're, you're connected there. And what, what you usually do, a lot of people are cursing, blaspheming, getting angry. And they're also, see, completely we are losing the control. We're losing our mind. And definitely there is no God and Holy Spirit. There is no way, right? But... A faithful person, even though in that situation, what he would usually do, take his prayer rope and patiently pray, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, the sinner, right? And driving. See the difference? So no matter what, he's going to bring fruit. But that's the fourth category. But we have three other categories of people that we are dealing with on a daily basis. So, if we want to be that fruitful soil, not the ones that are on the road or on the stone or among the thorns, because those, even though they are so different, they have at the same time a lot of similarities. And the biggest one is the care for the earthly life. How do, you, how do we look in front of people? How do we appear in front of people? What the people is thinking about us, right? So see, and all this is taking the attention from the true focus, from the true duty of a, a, a Orthodox Christian. And then, the demons of the air is taking all the focus. And we are left with nothing, fruitless, like that fig tree that Jesus cursed. It was full just of leaves, no fruit. Do we want to bring that fruit that we are supposed to because he entrusted his vineyard, his entire creation to, in our hands. He created us and put us in charge with everything he created. And this is a, it's a big responsibility. We cannot say, oh, it happened. No, nothing is happening. We are provoking things to happen. If we would not provoke those things, they would never happen. But we are provoking them, right? And you have, from these three categories, you have a lot of those that are saying, oh, and where is God? Who is God? Let him show himself to us, and then I will believe, right? This is what they said from the beginning of times till our days. And there was those that went outside with their swords, lances, 
guns and shooting in the air, where are you? Show yourself to me, right? We have those crazy ones too. But where are they? And do, do any of us know those names? No. But we know the names of those that dedicated themselves to God, brought fruits as the holy apostles, holy fathers, holy martyrs. Even though if we, if we, we don't know the names of all of them because they are hundreds of, uh, hundreds of th thousands, but we know a lot of them, right? But those that were against God, who knows them? No one. Because they never brought fruit. They were fruitless. They were dried. And this is a hint for us today to take it seriously, to take out the stones and the thorns from our heart, to water our heart with the tears of our repentance, to make it soft, because each land, if it's properly worked, it can provide those fruits, it can give us the crops with hard work. Some easier, some harder. But if we want, it will, right? So much more our heart. If we want to be in communion with God, if we want to accept him, to receive his teaching, and to water the th the, that seed, with the tears of our repentance, to work with loving attitude to, uh, towards God and his creation and towards an entire world, then we will leave the paradise from here, starting from here, from earth. We will leave the grace of God because we uh, as the, one of the saints said that the man sanctifies the place, not the place sanctifies the man. Many hear, oh, it's that monastery has the grace. Every place can have the grace, but it depends on us. We are sanctifying the places. We are sanctifying the ground, the churches, and everything with our love, with our attitude, with our good works. And the same thing we are doing, we are destroying everything with our attitude. So you see, it depends what kind of soil we have in our heart. And this would be the works of our hands. What is in our heart. And you can see and judge from the people's works what, what kind of soil each one of us have in our heart. My dear ones, let us work hard. Let us prepare. Now we are living difficult times. We are literally living the apocalyptic, apocalyptic times. We are seeing all those things that St. John wrote in, in the Apocalypse, in the Revelations. We are living those things on daily basis. Much more now we have to be prepared to work to soften the ground of our hearts, to be open to his word, to be open to, his, to receive his love and to transmit his love to others, those that are hard-hearted. We have to help each other. Yes, it works on each individual. We, each individual has his soul and is responsible for it, for it and to work on it. But he, at the same time, he said, where are two or three 
united in my name, I am with them. So, which means that we have to help each other. And also he said, aren't we saying in every single divine liturgy, let us love one another, that with one voice we may confess, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May God help us all. God bless you all.